Okay, in this video I would like to do a couple of example calculations using the rotational concepts that we have just talked about. So um, first, let's consider a merry-go-round. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this, this is um, a child's playground equipment. Um, and so it basically consists of a disc like this with a um, turntable. Um, and then there's usually some things to hold on to on it like this. Um, and then um, this thing spins. So children can push it and then ride around on it. And uh, it's, it's fun for somebody. Um, okay, so um, what I want to consider is, let's say that we have the top view for this, and maybe the radius is two meters. And if the um, merry-go-round starts at rest, um, and a child then pushes it uniformly through three full revolutions um, in the course of 20 seconds, then what I want to know is what are the accelerations? We just want to calculate essentially all of the accelerations for this. Um, and again, I'm doing this kind of as an example since we have many different kinds of accelerations going on. Okay, so um, I want to solve this constant acceleration problem the same way that I would have done for the one-dimensional um, constant acceleration problems before. So I'm just going to take an inventory of what I know. So I know delta phi, the total angle it goes through, is three revolutions, which is going to be the same as six pi radians. Okay, um, we also know that the time interval for the whole motion is 20 seconds. And we know that the initial angular speed is going to be zero because it starts at rest. Okay, so if I want to find alpha, since we're trying to calculate all of the different kinds of acceleration for this, well, I want a formula that's going to include all of those. So one option is that the um, change in angular position is equal to one half alpha times delta t squared plus the initial speed times delta t. Okay, so plugging what we know in, this is going to be six pi radians equals one half alpha times 20 seconds squared, okay? Um, plus zero, because the initial speed was zero. All right, so then if I solve for alpha, what I'm going to get is um, 0 0.094 radians per second squared. Okay, so that's the rotational acceleration, the angular acceleration for this wheel. But that's not the only kind. So we can also find the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so in order to do that, remember that the, um, the centripetal acceleration is vt squared divided by r, which is omega squared r. Okay, so the centripetal acceleration depends on what point we consider. On the merry-go-round, let's consider um, that the child is standing right on the very edge. Okay, so r is going to be equal to two meters in this case. Um, if we considered a point closer to the middle, the acceleration would be lower. Okay, so we need to find the final angular velocity then. Um, and we know all of the other things, so we can pretty much pick any formula we want. Let's use omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two alpha times delta phi. Okay, well, the initial omega is zero. We know alpha is 0 0.094 radians per second squared, and delta phi is six pi radians. And so um, if we do this calculation, then we end up with the final omega is equal to 0 0.75 radians per second. Okay, so um, that's the final angular speed after the child is done pushing the merry-go-round. So then if I plug that into the formula, the centripetal acceleration is um, omega squared r, so 0 0.75 radians per second squared times two meters. Um, and that's going to give me um, 1.14 meters per second squared. Now notice I have radians here. So if you're being careful with the units, which you usually should be, um, I would have radians squared uh, meters per second squared, which might be a little bit alarming, but remember radians are just a ratio. So um, it doesn't actually hurt anything to have those in there. In fact, this needs to be in terms of radians to do this calculation. So if you had it in terms of um, degrees or in terms of revolutions, you would have to convert to radians in order for this to work. Okay, so this is a second acceleration that we have. The um, 1.14 meters per second squared is the centripetal acceleration, okay, which is you know pretty respectable. This, the child would definitely feel like they were being flung around um, because of that acceleration. Okay, um, so now let's find the um, tangential acceleration. So the tangential acceleration is going to be um, the alpha times r. And remember, alpha was um, 0 0.094 radians per second squared, and r is two meters. So this is just going to be um, 0 0.19 meters per second squared. Okay, so this is the um, tangential acceleration. It's smaller than the centripetal acceleration, but still noticeable. It's, you know, um, you know maybe a sixth or so of the size. And so it's, it's an important contribution. Okay, and then if we want to find the total acceleration, remember the centripetal acceleration and tangential acceleration are uh, perpendicular to each other. So for this point, we have um, AT in this direction and AC in this direction. 
where there's a 90 degree angle. So to combine those, we need to do AT squared plus AC squared. Um, and if we plug those in, then we're going to get um, essentially uh, 1.14 meters per second squared. Um, oh, I actually copied this earlier one down wrong. This should be 1.12. So um, ultimately the um, tangential acceleration that makes a really small contribution, but it is possible to see the difference. Um, but this is the, the general idea. So we have uh, many different kinds of acceleration. We have uh, rotational acceleration or angular. We have centripetal, which is also called radial, um, tangential. And then the total acceleration is uh, 1.14 meters per second squared. And the angle for that, if you did vector addition, is going to be kind of this way. Um, so kind of at an angle, um, you know, not exactly towards the center of the, of the wheel. Okay, so that's a pretty involved example. Let's do another one. This one will be a little simpler. So let's consider that we have a wheel it is rolling 10 meters per second, and we know its radius is equal to 0 0.5 meters, and it stops in five seconds. Okay, the question then is we want to find alpha. Okay, so what I'm going to do, since we know the wheel is rolling and we know its radius and we know its tangential speed, is I'm going to find omega. So omega is going to be V over R, and this is specifically the tangential speed, and we know that's 10 meters per second divided by 0 0.5 meters, Okay, and that's going to give us um, 20 radians per second. You might wonder, where did the radians come from? I canceled meters, shouldn't I just have one over seconds? Again, remember that um, radians are a ratio. So I have the ratio of the velocity and the radius, which is why that comes out to radians per second. Okay, so this was specifically the initial angular velocity. Um, we know the final angular velocity is zero because it comes to a stop. And we know that the delta t is equal to five seconds. So if we want to find alpha here, then we just pick an appropriate formula to plug into. So for instance, um, alpha is omega final minus omega initial divided by the time interval. Um, that's true for constant acceleration. And so that's going to be um, 20 radians per second divided by um, five seconds. And so then this acceleration comes out to four radians per second squared. Okay. And again, we could calculate a centripetal acceleration here, a tangential acceleration. We could calculate um, any of the other things that we're interested in. We could figure out how far it goes, what angle it rolls through in this time, um, using just the same sorts of kinematics equations that we used before, plus also the relationships between them.